the kitchen is under renovation, so I can't turn the overhead light on and I don't have anywhere to plug in a light. Maybe we'll move. This is normally where I would walk from and this is normally where the table sat. This is always where we talk, but shortage of construction workers and a shortage of materials means I'm a month into this with no kitchen and I've decided now we're just going to roll with it. So let me sit in front of this light and see what I can do with this situation. Okay then. It's a mess, huh? I wish somebody had told me what I'm about to tell you. You hear people say, it's the little things that count. And as you get older, you seem to appreciate the little things. And when I heard that, I would think, yeah, cause you know, you're about to die and you just want your youth back and you know, you wasted it. And now you're just trying to make up for lost time. Well, I'm young and I can waste all the time I want. I don't have to worry about it. So it ain't the little things for me. It's gonna be the big things. And now I understand. I didn't understand. And I want you to hear this because I don't want you to miss what I missed. Because the best way to go to your death is to die to the past every day. And it doesn't mean grieve it. It means you got it. So you can move on. It means moving on well. And so here's, here's the thought experiment that I want you to do. I have an allergy. All this rain. Date back to your high school years. If they were crappy, do you have any memories at all that were good? And if so, were they the really, really big ones? Because I had some really big ones. I got inducted into the National Honor Society. That was cool. But that's not what I think about. I think about this moment when I was a cheerleader and it was the last game of my senior year. And I was sad, but not that sad. I was mostly excited because how, where I was headed, you know, college and where I was going. And, but all around me, the others were crying and really devastated and sad. But I just remember this feeling of satisfaction of how hard I had worked, and what I had accomplished. You would think it would be going across the stage and getting my diploma. That's, that's the big thing. But no, it was standing at a vending machine and getting this apple soda and this chocolate cookie and that was lunch. And being happy that I had earned that money in that moment when it dropped down and I pulled it out and I turned around and I was going to go sit outside and eat and I was happy to be on a break. Like that one moment was, the, what, what's a, it was just such a small moment. I remember meeting my favorite teacher for the first time and she would be one of my greatest mentors for 20 years. But I remember the moment I first laid eyes on her. And then all these other moments of being in her class over four years. I remember the first time that I met Kenny. He walked into our class and he was freaking gorgeous. He was so beautiful. Do you see that these moments don't stand out when they're happening? They're just like, oh, cool. Oh my God, he's good looking. And ah, apple soda, chocolate cookie. 
Those are the moments that are so easily missed. But when you look back, yeah, the big ones are there, but when you look back and reminisce, it's these moments that seem at the time unimportant. So why did I miss it? Because I was really stressed. Because I was trying to keep my GPA up. It was never gonna matter. My, your GPA in high school doesn't matter. But I was told it did. I was worried about paying some bills, saving up to move out of the house. I was stressed about my job. I was too tired to go to work because I was working so much and trying to maintain my grades. I was so stressed out. I was exhausted living in a very, a very abusive environment, not wanting to go home, going to work and taking on extra shifts so I didn't have to go home. That's what I was thinking about. I don't live very far from where I did when I first got on benzodiazepines. It's right up the road. It was the first house when we were relocated because <clears throat> of Hurricane Katrina. And we relocated and we were so happy to get this house. It was so nice and rent was doable. And it was such a great neighborhood and we took the kids trick-or-treating. And it was such a, a wonderful experience. And so now that I'm talking with my family and we're thinking about possibly leaving the South, I don't know, maybe three or four years from now, I realize my, all of my memories are here. And I'll never see the South again if I go. I know I won't. And I realize all the places I can't actually go back and visit and sort of grieve and say goodbye to, but this one is right down the road. So I went by the other day and oh my God, it was just instant tears. It's really deep pain of loss. And so the memory is being so happy to be able to take them through this childhood sort of rite of passage experience that's very short. It only happens one night a year and only for however many years of their childhood. My daughter was already getting too old to go and I remember her not wanting to go and being like, oh God, this is how that starts. I left her there on the computer talking to friends And my son, and, and he was dressed up like a ghost, and how excited he was to be getting candy. And now he's 20 and doesn't trick or treat. And where I live, there's not, you don't get many trick or treaters. And I remember the first year that I had no more children trick or treating, it was so hard to take. But when I look back on that house, that is my biggest memory. There were other really good memories there. These rocks that my son found when we went on a walk, I didn't even know he was picking up and he came home and he pulled them out and they were just little pebbles from the ground. And his tiny little hand with those rocks in it standing on the front porch of that house. Like, why is that what I remember? Why did I miss those things? tell you why I miss those things. Because that night, my daughter, it was the first year she didn't want to go trick-or-treating. And I was so busy thinking about her. But even a bigger reason that I missed the importance of that night is because what I didn't know is I was looming toward my very first dose of benzodiazepines. This was where I was living as I was struggling to pay the bills with all the debt left over from Hurricane Katrina. Because all I could think about was how hungry I was and that I was gonna skip dinner when we got home because I wanted everyone else to eat. Because I didn't know how I was gonna pay the power bill and the, and the due date was coming. And I didn't have any more gas in my car and didn't know where any gas money was gonna come from. and. 
how sick I felt and the anxiety I felt and the knot in my stomach, the anger at FEMA that I paid into my whole life that wasn't there, the, the fact that I did everything right, I paid all my premiums for insurance and then they played all these games and they still ripped me off and the trauma I had been through just to get to that point like all I could, that's all that was going on in my head. And part of me was just thinking, you know, my son's pulling at his, his costume and he's afraid to say trick or treat and this is stupid and, but he's having fun, but then he gets freaked out and he's hanging on to me really tight and, and am I sure he's having fun? And, and I'd ask, you wanna go home? Few more houses, Mama. Few more houses, Mama. I didn't know that night that that's what today, as I drove past that house, I would have the image of about that leaving the house to go trick or treating, coming back to the house after trick or treating. So I tell you this because I live with a lot of regret. It wasn't my fault that I was having panic and anxiety. It wasn't my fault that I didn't know it truly was the little things. It's because no one told me what I'm telling you. It really is the little things. By that I mean, it's right now. You don't know when you're gonna go walking in a forest and find a mushroom that's gonna change your life. You don't know when you pick it that it just might be changing your life in that moment. You don't know when you turn left instead of right that you pass a park and that that park is gonna be something that that day that you walked in it and just felt so much peace would be a day that you would look back on and remember. You don't know, in hindsight, what you're gonna remember. Because if you're so busy worried, if you're so busy seeking the high, if you're so busy working toward a goal, you're gonna miss the fact that you've got a really good cup of coffee. What I could be missing right now is something very important that's happening in this kitchen. What I could easily be doing is stressing out about the fact that it's been a month without a kitchen. Why does this happen to me? I have another construction project in the basement and it's been going on for three years and my next door neighbor renovated theirs and everything went perfectly. And I see my other next door neighbor and they did this big outside project and it went perfectly and it looks amazing. And of course it happens to me. What am I gonna do about it? I'm so stressed out about never knowing where I'm gonna cook anything and everything is difficult and I'm missing meals because I, I don't have any food available and I'm too busy to go to the store and I don't want to do delivery because it's bad for you and I'm so tired of being stressed out about this kitchen and I don't know if I'm going to have enough money to finish it because the price of everything's gone up and I wish I had known that before I started it and how am I going to finish it and where's the money going to come from and look at this every day I walk in here and I have to look at this mess and this source of shame and I don't feel any of those things. One, because I'm Anita. But two, because age really does. You've got to have enough distance to look back and start paying attention to what it is you remember about everything, the shitty times in your life and the good times in your life. And what I know is going on right now is that I remember that this kitchen was so dark. I couldn't see anything in it. I would get my light ring light and put it over the stove so I could see to cook. And I remember that this, this corner 
It was like the only counter space I ever had to work in and the counters are old and the walls are old and nasty and roaches keep getting in and I couldn't find where they were getting in. And every time I walked in this kitchen, my energy just sank and I couldn't figure out why. And then when they did the demo, like there was this negativity in the house and everything felt gross and angry and the cats started hissing and they quit coming in the bedroom and they started pooping outside the litter box and I thought it was just that they were upset because of the noise, you know, and the disruption. But I had to admit that when I would leave the house, I didn't want to come home. The dark energy was awful. And then it occurred to me, like this, that corner that I hated, now that everything was out of it, it was the everything that was out of it that had this dark energy. And that corner felt like it was starting to rise, like it was starting to lighten up. So I decided to put a fan on it. I was reading some feng shui and uh, about people trying to do feng shui and, and changing up their lives in their house. And one of the advices was to get light on it and put a fan on it, on the empty space. It was insane how much better it felt immediately. And so I left the fan on for three days. And then when they finally came after a week and took all of the debris and sheetrock and cabinets out of here, I can't even begin to tell you the change in the whole house, the vibe of the entire house was raised. And now I know, had they come in and emptied this kitchen and immediately started putting everything back, that dark and negative energy wouldn't have been gone. That negative energy would have carried over. And who knows what that negative energy would have done to the workers in that space. They would have paid less attention, maybe been more irritable and cranky. Maybe the foreman would have wanted more money because things didn't feel right and nothing worked right and things didn't fit right and he couldn't, it was just more trouble and more trouble and more trouble. Negativity begets negativity. And now I am so grateful for the delay. It gave me time to move this space, to sink the right energy in it that I want, to think twice about the colors that I had chosen that I chose only because they would be better for making videos, but maybe not necessarily better for my eyes or that I wanted to live in or for resale. It gave me time to think about the flow of moving in the kitchen. So I started rethinking where I was gonna put things and I'm gonna put them differently now. I think I'm gonna wind up with a much better space that not only is gonna serve you because of the experiments and the videoing that I can do, it's gonna serve this house. It's gonna serve the future families that live here. There's no more negativity in here. And this time I didn't ruin this moment by going to all that negativity. This time, because I know now, it's the little things. It's every moment that's important. Now when I'm negative, and I'm saying negative shit to myself and I'm victimizing myself, it is a red flag for me to go, hold on, you're missing something here. What's the flip side of this? Pay attention. Hello? Pay attention. Look. Psst. Look. And it's like I hear magical wonder and chimes and orbs coming in and I get to peer into it and there's these rays of light and it's showing me the beautiful magical secret this is the thing you're gonna look back on with wonder that was a good day this is the good day for this kitchen yeah, the day it's finished and I get the last thing moved in and I get to go, oh, I got a new kitchen, oh my God. I've been saving up for this for four years, busting my ass to save money, sacrificing for this kitchen. And yeah, that'll be a good day. But when I move out of this house, 
the last thing I'm gonna do is come back in and walk up to this kitchen and remember sitting here today, making this video for you because you're beautiful. Because I'm not always gonna be making videos and you're not always gonna need me. And this kitchen won't always be an empty space. I'm in the middle of making something beautiful with you, with me, and with this kitchen. And every time we anchor beauty and love, those are the moments we remember fondly. Don't miss your moments. I'm not missing this one. Thanks for being here to share it with me. I love you, beautiful people. Bye.